Your history is here to help here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Professor Harrison Kim, UH History Department, joins us today for a discussion of uh, update on Korea, North and South. Uh, and I guess the tagline of that is, uh, can Kim Jong-un do missiles and COVID at the same time? That's a real magic trick to do that. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Harrison. Thank you very much for having me, Jay. Thank you. So let's, let's address the top-down news here. So, um, you know, uh, last week he's firing missiles off and uh, being threatening on South Korea. Uh, and then we have a new president in South Korea that sort of <laughs> churns up more information in the pot. Um, and, and, and then, of course, you know, in the last few days, he's had a remarkable surge in, in COVID, like from zero cases, he says, uh, to, you know, thousands of cases, 500, 1,000, something. Uh, all of a sudden, you really wonder about the veracity of that. But uh, here we are where he's, he's got two major initiatives to handle, and each one draws away uh, from the other. So what do you think is going on in North Korea right now? Right. So um, the first thing to uh, keep in mind is that North Korea, just like any other modern state machinery, um, operates on many levels. So last week, missile testing, um, you know, which North Korea often carries out regularly throughout the year, um, according to some um, uh, historical or monumental events. So North Korea was certainly doing that um, uh, last week with its missile testings. But at the same time, uh, we are now getting the first uh, confirmation of real cases of COVID-19 in North Korea. Um, there's, uh, we believe there's more than uh, 1.5 million cases in North Korea right now. Wow. And yeah. Um, and North Korea is a smaller country of 25 million people. South Korea has 50 million people. North Korea has 25 million. Um, and uh, we are also getting reports of people dying from COVID. So um, this is a dramatic change. Um, most, the, mo the most dramatic part of it is that North Korea is actually sharing with the world what's happening um, there uh, right now. Mm. Well, yeah, but uh, how accurate, we're never sure. Right, <laughs> right. You know, you know, that is always a big concern, but um, what we can confirm, and, and, and I have colleagues who are, um, who have experience working with North Korea's medical system, that in the past two years, North Korea's lockdown system was highly effective, um, just like China. So as we know, in, in China, when it's working, it's working. Mm -hmm. So entire cities can have zero cases. Mm -hmm. We're, but, but of course, when a, when a uh, breakout happens, we know that the lock, lockdown system also has many negative um, effects as well. So we know that in North Korea in the past two years, um, there have been very low number of cases. North Korea claims zero. No one can verify that. But we know that the number is very, very low, very low. Um, the borders have been shut. And uh, within North Korea, um, a movement and um, a mask mandate um, have been very strict. Um, so we know that the, the, how North Korea has dealt with um, has been very effective so far. But the Omicron variation, this seems to be a different kind of problem for North Korea. And uh, it seems like there was a, uh, a penetration um, in the barrier and the lockdown has not worked uh, in the past um, a few weeks. And we are going to see um, really bad cases um, in the coming months. This has an effect on his, um, his uh, cult of personality leadership, doesn't it? I mean, I remember, for example, um, they had some Western doctors go in there and do eye operations on people who were blind. And, uh, and um, no magic, but they corrected a lot of blind people, you know, and gave them vision again. Yeah. And the first thing out of the mouths of the people who were saved, who had vision again, was thank you, dear leader. 
um, that it was Deal Eater that did this for them, not not modern medicine. Um, and I and I suspect that um, this puts a chink in his armor. Um, to say, well, he he's supposed to protect them. He's supposed to save them. He is the deal leader, but he can't seem to save them from COVID. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, you know, you know, that is one fascinating angle about North Korean culture, um, North Korean language, uh, how it's related to this, our notion of ideology. Um, and it's a very complicated process. Um, and, you know, um, well, to begin with, North Korea's medical system is um, uneven. And by that, what I mean is that in certain areas, North Korea's medical system is highly advanced. I'm talking about basic health care, vaccination, caring for babies um, and children and so forth. Um, North Korea has had universal health care um, from the 1960s and you know, similar to places like Cuba, Costa Rica, although expensive machines are lacking, fundamental basic care is, um, is very good in North Korea. So, so we have that going. Now, what is highly um, um, troublesome here is that if there is anything that is uh, acute or new that's developing in North Korea, um, they don't have the infrastructure and the, and the sophisticated equipment to tackle um, these uh, arising situations. And, and COVID is one of them. So testing kits, they don't have them. Vaccines, they certainly do not have them and, and, and they don't have the technology to make them yet because, you know, this has to be done immediately. So, 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 um, so while North Korea's health system has capacity to vaccinate its people um, and, and they have done that uh, throughout its history, if there's anything new that arises, North Korea has tough times. With this leader, uh, there are some differences um, uh, compared to his uh, his um, father and his grandfather. So Kim Jong-un seems to be someone who is more um, open to the public about the good and the bad things of the government. So so in, in a speech last year, you know, he was, he was talking about how um, the economy is not improving. And, and that uh, diplomacy in, in the past two years, and we know what this is about, right? The whole fiasco with, with Trump and South Korea, it did not work out. Mm -hmm. A major failure in North Korea's uh, diplomatic um, you know, front, and, and he was very open about this. And uh, it seems like you know, he is more open to sharing uh, the situation with the public. Now, but I'm not saying that, that, that he is, is uh, changing his uh, style of rule. It is still very much of a party state. And one family, Kim, the Kim family has the control. But he is, um, um, I guess, using different tactics to connect with the people. So yes, North Korea still has a very strong cultural identity with the leader you know so for example giving any kind of glory to the kim family and the kim leader it's become a part of their cultural lexicon um you know but at the same time you know uh it's much more complicated than than blindly following um this one person well i mean there's all kinds of implications now with this crisis um, the first implication I want to ask you about is is the the missile program. I mean, he yeah. was being very threatening, gratuitously threatening. You know, I mean, I I don't know if there was a clear reason why he would have, you know, returned to that kind of threat. Um, now, uh, he doesn't really need it geopolitically. He does he doesn't he doesn't he just, people uh, speculate that he just wants attention once in a while on the national or rather international stage. And um, there we go uh, again, you know, and it's sort of a, um, you know, a, a repetition of earlier, you know, uh, exposures. Um, yeah. But this has to, this has to trump that. I hate to use that term. This has to trump that. <laughs> and it makes the missile program look really unimportant. Am I right? 
Well, the, the missile program um, and the nuclear program, um, they have um, very important roles domestically and for the outside. It's clear that North Korea uh, depends on um, the identity of a very strong uh, military um, defense um, as a kind of a method to galvanize and unite the population and, and at the same time use that on the global stage for uh, diplomatic or negotiating tool. So that's going to continue on. Um, North Korea is extremely proud of its um, national defense. It's probably for the detriment of many other sectors of the country, but nevertheless, North Korea is extremely proud. Um, and it is one point that they will not um, sacrifice. Um, so, so that's a constant factor. At the same time, um, the failures that they experienced um, during the, uh, the Trump era uh, between the United States um, and, and, um, and South Korea, this was a huge blow. You know, there was uh, so much hope, so much expectation riding on uh, you know, this kind of better engagement with the United States because that's North Korea's number one foreign goal, a better relationship with the United States. Um, and, you know, and, and this, uh, this really ineffective um, uh, relationship that it had with South Korea, you know, headed by a president who was very pro-engagement. He wanted to work with North Korea. He talked about this idea of, of unification all the time. And, um, but, you know, um, we're talking about President Moon. Um, and he, uh, and, uh, and there was very little actual practical outcome from that relationship. So, so, so with this background and this new presidency who's, you know, uh, who, who has uh, started his term in South Korea, uh, who's a very uh, conservative, uh, he, you know, he's a far right wing um, um, president. Mm. Um, and, you know, they, they always take a very strong case position against North Korea. So, so, so uh, you know, we have this situation, this new situation um, with the United States and with South Korea that uh, North Korea at this point does not see a clear solution. Um, and with this emergence of um, this COVID crisis, uh, we can expect North Korea to be in a very um, unstable position in the coming uh, months. Well, one element that uh, certainly um, complicates things is that President Yoon, who's only been in office uh, what, a few months, um, uh, has, has offered COVID assistance to North Korea, which it can use, which it will... It will it will benefit hugely with the assistance that he's offered. It's a very simple simple formula there. It will help, um, but I don't think that Kim Jong Un has accepted it. It's a, kind of at a stalemate, which is really silly. Um, and it, 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 in a funny way, if this I guess it is known around both Koreas what is happening. Yeah. Um, if it is known to the people in North Korea, it clearly undermine undermine uh, Kim's uh, Kim Kim Jong Un's. Uh, uh, authority and uh, you know uh, dear leader status because he could accept this but he's he's like um, you know he's habut you know habut he's he's just angry and yeah. he, and he's not yeah. he's not going to make deals with anybody he's shooting himself in the foot right in a way uh, in a way he is Jay in a way he is you know but with foreign aid any kind of foreign aid really um, we know that there is a lot of give and take. There's always a level of compromise. And we see this so clearly with North Korea. So with any kind of foreign aid coming from South Korea, North Korea knows that it has to give up something. So it, it is always, um, you know, this kind of a, a zero sum game with South Korea, and especially with this uh, conservative president, uh, North Korea knows that that's going to be the case. Now, how this foreign aid 
um, this, this assistance with vaccination is being handled is a, a huge problem for North Korea. That's why in the past two years, North Korea, you know, simply refused to accept uh, vaccinations from abroad. And, you know, we know now that this has been a, this is probably a, a huge mistake that North Korea will pay with its lives. But here's, um, so here's, here's a few different aspects. So, uh, um, so different countries and different organizations were offering vaccination um, through different small and large, um, I guess, humanitarian organizations. And North Korea had a huge problem with them. And some of these organizations are religious organizations. Um, what North Korea wants is a major international community like the UN or the WHO handling all the flow and giving North Korea technology to make its own vaccines. That's what North Korea was really asking for. And when, when, uh, when, the, when uh, big uh, brokers like the US and Europe said, oh, we cannot give North Korea the technology. North Korea might be, might be using it for some different purpose. So, so this became a huge point of controversy and debate and North Korea simply said no. You know, we, if you're not going to give us the technology, then we will not accept uh, vaccinations from a third party. So um, North Korea is, uh, is uh, in a different situation now. The situation is much more dire. And, you know, um, uh, and I think the U.S. has also pledged to, to um, send aid as well. But all this has to be coordinated um, by a centralized organizations like the UN or the WHO, where political consequences or, 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 um, or compromise or negotiations, negotiations can be reduced. So it's not going to be easy, but the vaccinations have to be sent there um, as soon as possible. So you have, um, you have the failure of the, uh, the better connection with the U.S. You have a and you have this very strange uh, set of circumstances with uh, the new president of South Korea, Yoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have COVID, you have missiles. Yeah. Oh, and I, I have to add one other point in there is, is that, you know, um, if, uh, uh, if Kim Jong-un didn't want to, didn't feel that he was a complete pariah, then he adds, he adds to that, that he is supporting Russia and opposing, um, you know, Ukraine. Uh, gee whiz, uh, you know, how, how can you paint yourself more into a corner? Uh, yeah. Why did he do that? And what effect does it have? Well, you know, uh, North Korea knows that um, that it can continue on um, as it has been by partnering with Russia and China. Um, you know, these are huge economies and culturally and politically they are aligned with North Korea. So North Korea feels like, you know, if the world is not going to change, We'll be fine with our partners, and you know, being being aligned with China and Russia at this time is probably uh, not such a bad economic partnership from from a certain side, you know, um, um, you know. But but at the same time, um, North Korea's uh, bigger goal is to move away from from its past, and and really enter. Uh, so a, a much larger global community with a relationship with the U.S., Japan, and South Korea. So that's its goal. Um, you know, conservative uh, right-wing leadership in history has done some um, uh, amazing, surprising um, projects in the past. So it was Nixon, you know, who opened China and. Reagan, who was so instrumental in bringing down or opening up the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and you know, and uh, it was uh, George W. Bush who uh, who actually started to give a lot a lot of aid to North Korea. So you know, so um, strange things have happened in in history for sure, and um, and very often it has been um, you know presidents from um, the right wing parties that have uh, made this work. You know, this is so ironic, you know, because, you know, 
you know, I'm a huge fan of um, Barack Obama, but it was uh, six out of five out of six nuclear tests were done during the time of um, Obama. So you know, it's a it's a it's a real historical conundrum here, right? During the presidency of a of a liberal president, and in a period of of you know uh, friendship. So so you know um, not I don't think uh, hope is all lost here. Even with the conservative president in South Korea, um, um, you know Biden, I think uh, has uh, shown some kind of willingness to help North Korea, um, and you know for you know, but, but of course for the interest of a a better and more secure East Asia uh, overall, right? I mean that's that's our goal, um, not just North Korea, but a more secure and stable East Asia. So, you know, I think many parties still have an important stake here. Well, let me, let me uh, offer you, you know, um, uh, kind of uh, a look at a transitional moment. I, I think we agree that uh, with, with these various failures and pressures and crises, uh, with the changes in the world, the uncertainty, of, you know, of, of the, uh, uh, the building blocks of, uh, of uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, foreign policy, uh, it's all changing around him, um, and where he might have, um, you know, rejected uh, possibilities, entrees from the West before, uh, maybe maybe those changes has an effect on it. And of course, you have the people who are probably more Akamai now than they were early on with him. Absolutely, that's and right. They, and he may not be able to count on them in exactly the same way, you know, as the dear leader. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's got things happening around him. That's that's one thing. So it's a transitional moment. The, uh, and the other thing is that, and, and it's something you mentioned. And I agree. I, 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 go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no I agree that, that uh, North Korea is in a, a, um, a very important transitional moment uh, with a population that is uh, uh, liberalizing, that is um, 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 finding more opportunities to deal with the outside world. We know this is happening. So, you know, as you were saying, uh, North Korea's um, um, leadership and uh, the, the Kim uh, family's authority to hold on to its uh, power using the same style of rule, I think it has to change. Yeah, that's, that's what I, uh, I would like to ask you about. And so, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, various people across the years have said, hey, wouldn't it be great? If the Koreas be, could be reunited, and um, I mean it's the same people, it's the same culture, it's the same families, it's 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 the same language, it's everything is the same, and it it actually it's it's tragic, it tears your heart to know that there's this barrier between two groups of the same people, even more than in West Germany and East Germany, even more because these Asian families are strong, the bonds are strong. And I think a lot of people regret and resent the fact they've been torn apart for so many years. Um, and, and, so, and so and visionary people have come from time, time to time and said, hey, can't we put it back together again? It would be so wonderful in the fullest sense of the word if we could do that. And yet, Kim doesn't want to do that, as his father didn't want to do that, and so forth. Um, and I just don't understand why he would reject all the entreaties from South Korea and from the international community. Why don't you guys get together? Why don't you reunite? And he doesn't want to do it. What, 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 what's the reason for that? Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it benefit him? And if he cared about his people, wouldn't it benefit his people? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jay. You know, I, I think, um, I think your, your, your point is, is right on. You know, Korea um, had been united since the seventh century, and uh, for over a thousand years, um, you know, it was a peninsula of the same people, same culture, same language, more unified than many other places in the world. But you know, but it was um, Korea was also um, a victim of the Cold War uh, games and um, and global systematic um, conflict, and you know, this has had a, a lasting effect uh, where you know two two sides 
um, have created such different political systems and a cultural I identity, two very different cultural I identity that, um, I, that a, a clear path toward unification, although it is a goal that the two countries have always talked about, it is still a goal for the two countries. Um, but uh, there are so many different uh, levels of complexity here. Um, and of course, um, we, nobody wants another war in the peninsula. And at the same time, nobody wants one side to simply collapse either. So we want some kind of a democratic changes through probably very slow eventual changes through referendum and some kind of a democratic uh, process. And this uh, will probably take a lot of sacrifice from the North. And, um, and North Korea is, is still trying to figure that out, how it's going to live with, for example, the US military that is probably not going to go away in, in South Korea for, for a long time. Can, can North Korea really live with, um, with the US military base in South Korea? There are signs um, that tell us that North Korea is willing to do that. So, so there are incremental changes, incremental changes. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, uh, this kind of this situation of, of COVID-19 crisis happening in North Korea, it may also present new opportunities to new opportunities for engagement. Well, I, I, you know, from time to time when this question has been raised, you can feel that American industry um you know would 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 support uh what do you want to call it the democratization the modernization uh the globalization of of north korea um and, right. and that they would they would invest huge sums of money and uh and technology and um you know support in general to to bring it current bring it modern and, and uh, included in the world community they would go very, very far distances to do that. Um, and but it hasn't happened, hasn't happened. There are, there are people out there I know would, would love to get into North Korea and help, uh, you know, bring, bring, it, bring it into the modern age. But the question I put to you, Harrison, is um, uh, uh, Trump was ineffective in that. He didn't have any clue about how you might do that. Uh, he was just doing his personality thing. Um, and um, maybe Biden's better. Maybe another president would be even better. But what is your recommendation to America, to the State Department, to the, a president who could see this as a, an important mission, you know, a Nobel Peace Prize kind of uh, a huge achievement, a, a global contribution? What, how do you handle it? I, I appreciate your incremental idea, but what, what steps do you take first? Right. So, you know, there were uh, moments of breakthrough um, in uh, recent memory. 1994, um, during the Clinton era, Jimmy Carter was over there in North Korea negotiating, uh, probably, um, uh, and, and it could have been a major breakthrough um, in some kind of partnership with, uh, between uh, North Korea and the United States. Kim Il-sung died right after the meeting with Jimmy Carter, so nothing really happened there. But um, I think there has to be some major change in the U.S. foreign policy in East Asia. Uh, you know, North Korea, although it is a small country, but it is a key of unlocking um, the conflict, the nature of conflict and tension in East Asia. I mean, North Korea is the key bringing peace with, uh, with Japan, China, Russia, and of course, South Korea. And um, I, think it, I think the time has arrived when our previous approach simply has not worked. North Korea is a willing partner. And, uh, and kind of like what you just said, the American enterprises would, be, uh, would benefit greatly by, by going into North Korea. So, I think first, first, there is, there should be a recognition um, that it, it would be a mutually beneficial uh, project in, engaging with North Korea. And second, 
you know, uh, for a much more stable East Asia and Asia, um, it has to be the U.S. that steps up and, you know, uh, makes um, the next big step forward with North Korea. Yeah, and it would be hugely beneficial to the U.S. too, because it would give us, um, you know, greater influence in in East Asia and with China. Yes. Because um, right now China likes the division, doesn't it? And uh, we, <laughs> this would this this would give us a little leverage over that. But one one other, one other question I want to ask you about is um, talking about advice advice of the State Department to the a president who might see this clearly. Um, but query. What advice would you give to Kim Jong Un? Because if he turned around and and made some changes in the way he projects his power, the yeah. way he projects his um, you know his his his, his governance, uh, if he made some changes, it would really change things on an expedited basis. I think no. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, North, and you know, and North Korea has been showing changes on this front front as well. You know, but uh, uh, North Korea, uh, from the leadership on down, they have to change its rhetoric. Um, they have to approach the global community in a more um, liberal, um, I guess, sophisticated manner. Um, and they have to recognize that things simply do not work in a black and white kind of um, um, angle here and they know that the issue of um, human rights and the nuclear program these are the two biggest concerns that these power players have like the united states south korea japan and north korea has to be willing to talk about this at all times at all times so north korea is trying to do this to, to, to not simply reject what we are demanding, but they have to get better. They have to um, recognize that human rights and the nuclear weapons program are going to be uh, either, right, either a roadblock or something that can really um, um, open up uh, ways of, of engaging with the world. Yeah, and, and the, 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 what happened with Sony is, is, is gotta not happen again. Um, so they made a funny movie about him, and uh, then he went and, and hacked them. That was that was uh, unnecessary. But let me ask you this: so we have a new president, uh, yes. Yoon Suk Yeol, um, and um, you know he was smart enough to, uh, you know, open the door and offer some help on the vaccines, and that's to his credit. Whatever his politics, it's to his credit. But but he's a player in this, as you said, he's a player between. North Korea, the United States, and China. He's right there. He's got a lot at stake. South Korea is a, is a modern, thriving economy, a, a, a technological marvel. Um, and you have to give credit. Uh, you know, it, it's the same people. When you make the comparison between North and South Korea, it's ridiculous because North right. Korea could be just like that. Anyway, what is what is what is, should be on his dance card here? What should yeah. President Yoon do to accelerate this process of, uh, you know, accommodation, hopefully one day reunification? Yeah. Well, uh, Yoon and, um, and the party that he comes from, um, they still depend on um, the traditional kind of Cold War mindset where alliance, military alliance with the United States is the most important foreign relationship for South Korea. Um, and um, although it is, although it is in many respects, um, it's not the same military uh, network in the world anymore. And, and it should not be that way. But of course, Yoon, um, you know, this, this new president, as, as soon as he uh, had a chance to talk with the US military personnel officials, he talked about and he mentioned that he wants the nuclear weapons um, from the United States to be back in South Korea. He, he actually mentioned this. Um, mm -hmm. um, the US pulled out, withdrew all of its nuclear facilities and nuclear weapons from South Korea, I believe in 1995, around 1995. Um, 
you know, with this goal of denuclearizing uh, the entire peninsula. But now Yoon wants to go back and, and, and uh, create um, a really strong sense of, of um, defense in South Korea with the assistance of US nuclear weapons system. So, so we know that the way that, that it's going already, uh, we are, we're talking about um, um, a, uh, a regression into a Cold War kind of uh, conflict and, and tension. We know that this is also happening with China, between China and the US, and of course, what's happening with Russia. Uh, we know that, that uh, history or the situation can regress really fast. So, uh, so that is something that I am very afraid of. You know, but at the same time, um, the two countries um, have always talked about unification and engagement, and it, it is part of its uh, ongoing agenda. So, you know, so we're hoping that, um, that the two sides will be able to meet very soon, um, and this kind of assistance aid can lead to more opportunities for exchange you know but the way the world is going now um things don't look too good jay i know thank you for reminding me i i try i try to be optimistic and it gets hotter every day yeah. <clears throat> so my last question for you harrison is this you know hawaii is different than other places in the world and certainly different from other places in the u.s and Hawaii has a large Asian population relative to, you know, total percentage yeah. wise. And it has a, a, you know, a substantial Korean population. And, and um, you know, uh, I mean, who understand each other, who get along with each other, who, you know, are very appreciative and tolerant of, you know, cultural differences and so forth. Um, no, no, I, I think that um, Hawaii could be a place, uh, a place where this meeting, a meeting, or some kind of exchange could take place. Um, you know, it, maybe Seoul is not so friendly to Pyongyang or vice yeah. versa, but Hawaii could be a place which is tolerant, understanding, um, and so forth. And so I ask you two questions. One is, do you think that's possible? Do you think it's, it's feasible, viable in any way? And the second part of the question is, what should the people in Hawaii, and Hawaii has the great risk of going backwater on international issues. We really have to keep that at the top of the agenda because we're an island state in the middle of the ocean. We have to think internationally. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you say to somebody, the average person on Bishop Street or at Manoa? What do you say about uh, his or her mindset yeah. over this whole possibility? Well, Jay, I, I uh, really appreciate your vision. And it seems like you do have a, a certain sense um, of um, um, prescience of, of what the, the future should be. I think Hawaii is uh, the perfect place where any kind of negotiation or engagement or meet between North Korea and the United States can happen. Um, before Nixon's, uh, I guess, relationship and his uh, visit to China, um, there was a lot of, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, backstage work Behind the behind the curtain negotiations that happened in Hawaii between between the, the U.S. and China, so so we know that um, Hawaii does symbolize uh, a place of um, of engagement where people can come and meet. Now we're also a very military dependent uh, place, and we're also very proud of our military as well. Um, you know, but um, um, having a strong military culture does not mean that we're against peace. Of course, that is not the case at all. Um, so we know that um, our two representatives right now, they're kind of split on the Korean War peace agreement issue, which is a bill now that is um, at the Congress. And while Ed Case is very cautious about this bill, and has not supported it yet, but Kaheli has, Kaheli has. And, and so, and, you know, and here's someone who comes from the, the military background, you know, because I think, I think many of us can clearly see that 
um, that we can still maintain our military culture and our military um, identity while supporting peace in places like um, Korea and especially on the issue of the Korean War where, um, where the legacy and the effect of the Korean War has had a tremendous uh, historical impact on, on Hawaii from immigration to migration to separation of families, right? And of course, um, uh, the people of Hawaii who um, have uh, died in the war as well. So, so we know that we, that, that we are a place that, uh, that needs to stand for peace. And uh, we can be a place where, uh, where uh, we can be the bridge between the two uh, Isn't countries. Isn't that true? And what a statement that would be, too. Uh, yeah. a, statement, a statement to ourselves, a statement to the Koreas, a statement to the world. Um, a, a tremendous success, and we can be a, an active participant. Uh, Harrison, we're out of time. I really appreciate this conversation. We have gone far and wide, and I, I certainly appreciate your your points and comments. I look forward to having further discussions with you as time goes by. Thank yes, you for appearing on Think Tank. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you for having me. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.